Hello, YouTube. The 1980s were a strange, mysterious, wonderful time where lots of strange and interesting things were presented as toys to kids. I'm here to talk about the most absurd toys that we had in the 1980s. So bear with me and find out at the end what was the most absurd toy and also one of the more dangerous toys that we I was allowed to play with as a child in the 1980s. Were my parents secretly trying to mortally wound me? I don't know. It's the year 1988. For some strange reason, we needed a toy that featured versions of food that they would call the food fighters. It was a glorious time for children as these toys represented something that we as a child always wanted to do. We always wanted to have a food fight. These toys were very odd and nightmare fuel for some, including myself. Um, I don't have a whole lot of experience with this toy, but I do know that I had friends that got these toys. Needless to say, they didn't play with these very often because um, they didn't have friends that actually wanted to play with these. Uh, and I also do believe that they had comic books that revolved around these toys. Uh, they had hot dogs, cookies, evil pancakes with machine guns. Um, the 80s were a time of machine guns, apparently, and I'll get more to that as we go on. Um, but there was leftover pizza and cans of peas and things like that. Uh, the fun went on for ages. So I present to you number 11 on our list, the Food Fighters. Next on our list at number 10 is a toy that is derived from a public service announcement regarding crashes crash test dummies to be specific we got to play with the incredible crash test dummies for whatever reason i guess these commercials public service announcements were so popular that they decided to make a toy for us kids to play with now this isn't a toy that i have much of experience with because that's kind of sick and twisted um I saw those commercials of those crash test dummies running through windshields. There was nothing about that that made me want to play with these. Um, they started in the 1980s and then they were revived in the 1990s. I guess what was done in the 1980s wasn't enough. And so they rehashed that and brought them back again in the early 1990s. Um, I'm not sure what the point of it was, but it's absurd. Crash test dummies as a toy. All right, time for number nine. This is another strange toy that uh, really doesn't make too much sense considering that they are just basically balls. Uh, we call them mad balls. Uh, these toys were designed to appear grotesque, monsters, uh, things losing their eyes, uh, they were just nasty. And again, something that would fuel nightmares. There wasn't a whole heck of a lot of you, do, you could do with these things, um, besides throw them to your friends. But somehow, they were able to expand on this collection and even include a car that you could fit these mad balls into. Um, these were a problem for schools and teachers because uh, they were brought to school at all times. Uh, they were nasty. They were inappropriate. Uh, it brings to mind something else uh, called the Garbage Pail Kids. Uh, they seem to be along the same vein. Uh, if you talk about the artistic approach that was taken with these. Um, as a kid, this was another toy that I did not play with because I did not see the reason behind it. I have a baseball, I have a softball, I have a basketball. What am I gonna do with a mad ball? Uh, yeah, so in at number nine, mad balls. All right, in at number eight were four bears that looked cute and cuddly, but they were called were bears for a reason. They would transform 
into hideous creatures. The bears were named Grizzler, Howler, Fang, and Gums. Each one with a side story explaining how they became what they became. Uh, these weren't exactly cute and cuddly toys, and something that, uh, again, I as a child had nothing to do with, because I valued my sleep at the time. And this was not a toy that was something that I wanted to play with at all. Uh, I don't think I had any friends that had this toy either. The pictures speak for themselves. Maybe in this day and age, you know, with kids being uh, given any type of media, they can, this is nothing. But back in the 80s, this was truly a nightmare. All right, time for lucky number seven. This toy was first introduced in 1985. As a part of He-Man and Masters of the Universe, the toy was called Stinkor. Yes, Stinkor. And it did stink. Uh, I'd had a chance to play with this toy and I remember the stench to this day. I don't understand it. I don't, I guess kids, you know, especially boys like gross things. And this was pretty gross. Um, I remember that we had to put it in a plastic bag in order to make sure that the stink didn't stink up any of the other toys that we had. Uh, so yeah, it's pretty nasty. Um, He-Man has quite a few interesting characters. Stinkor does not rank up there in the top for me, or most kids, I would imagine, in that time. But yes, number seven, Stinkor. All right, and at number six, something very, very strange. Uh, I hazard to show this to you because, um, well, picture says it all. Vintage Wonder Woman children's scissors. Now, these first came out in the 1970s, but they did make it to the 1980s. I think they had a second production. Um, I never saw these. When I looked uh, and I was searching for absurd toys, this was one of the first ones to pop up. Um, I don't understand why you'd want to put Wonder Woman on a pair of scissors like this. I think as a kid, especially a boy, we understand um, the problem here. Uh, so thankfully, I don't think they make these anymore. Um, but I'm sure that there are collectors out there that have these. But yes, and at number, number six, Wonder Woman scissors. All right. And at number five, I give you the finger from E.T. I'm not quite sure what you're supposed to do with this thing, but it truly was a finger that you stuck on your finger and it glowed. I don't know if you're supposed to pretend that you're healing somebody or what else, but again, this is one of those things where the picture speaks a thousand words. Um, I don't know what else there is to say about this toy. I think it sold for, I think it was five or six dollars. I could be wrong, but for that kind of price, for something that just glows and you stick on your finger, I don't know. I really don't know. You tell me what you think in the comments down below. All right, and at number four, I give you the Glow Worm. It was a stuffed toy for young children introduced in 1982 by Hasbro, uh, the play school di division. Uh, this toy, would glow because of battery that you put inside of it. Uh, it was also um, problematic for the toy manufacturer because it contained harmful ingredients, uh, softened with phthalates, which can be dangerous to children if swallowed. Um, I actually think I had this toy as a kid. I don't have too many memories of it. If I'm not mistaken, it stopped working pretty immediately. Uh, and that was problematic of the toys back then. They were mass produced. They weren't produced very well. Uh, inferior um, components were put into most of these things. So they would sell really well over Christmas, but then they would break pretty quickly as well. Uh, we don't have the same processes uh, back then that we do now. So returning things was not really something that we got a chance to do. So in at number four, the glow worm. All right, I've already said this. This is my first Rambo gun. Yes, 
They were produced for kids based on the rated R killer movie Rambo. Uh, I mean, I know I saw it as a kid. I didn't quite understand the marketing considering it was a movie that was for adults. But yes, they did produce many guns for little kids to get their hands on. So it, it is true. Rambo gave me my first gun. So let me get this straight. Mom, Dad, you actually were okay with a toy that was featured on Rambo. Uh, and they had many, many different forms of guns uh, that they were selling to kids back in the 1980s. This was a very popular toy line. And frighteningly so, uh, it was all revolved around one of the most violent series of the 1980s. All right. And then number two is a doll that you can correct me if I'm wrong, but pretty sure that it, it did start in the 1980s. It's called Mommy to Be. I, I know that there have been a few versions of Barbie uh, as Midge is a mom and then there's a pregnant Barbie. Uh, but nonetheless, this is... A disturbing and absurd doll to me that you lift its dress and you pull out a little baby from the stomach. Um, I have three daughters. I'm not prepared to have that conversation with them, especially regarding a doll that you could pull it out of the stomach and kind of talk about babies. Uh, there are times and places I'd rather not it be a doll that helps me with that conversation at, at this time. Maybe I'm wrong. Help me out. If you feel differently, leave a comment. All right, drum roll. In at number one, a toy that is very violent and can be very dangerous. It's called the lawn dart. Now, they've been around for many more years, but they still made it to the 1980s, like many other products. And for whatever reason, I specifically had this toy as well. I went as the Jart before, and then it became the Lawn Dart. Now, they sell a much safer version now that don't include the large aluminum metal tipped spear point that lands into the ground as you throw them high up in the air to try to get them inside of a plastic hoop. But back in the 80s, we didn't believe in safety. We didn't believe in helmets. We didn't believe in all that nonsense. This is a dart. You throw it in the ground and you'll do it and you'll be happy. So we did. I was lucky enough not to get injured but it could happen. I mean, you know, you have one hoop on one side, one hoop on another, and you normally stood next to it. So I know there were injuries that did occur. None that I can tell you about, but uh, yeah. So I hope you enjoyed this tour of the top 11 most absurd toys that I know of from the 1980s. If you know of any other toy that I might have missed, feel free to comment down below. There is so much to be able to talk about toys wise from the 1980s that I'm sure I'm missing something, but these are the toys that I am familiar with. I have a little bit of knowledge about, but I'm sure there's something else that I'm missing. I hope you enjoyed this trip down memory lane and always remember wherever you go, there you are.